Okay, well, the latest issue of Bloomberg Business Week hits newsstands today. Get your copy. Joining us now with a preview is the editor of Bloomberg Business Week, Josh Tirangal. And Josh, great to see you again. Good to see you. Good okay, so let's talk about your cover story because it's all about, all about jobs, right? The permanent temporary workforce. We're That's talking right. about 26% of the population uh, or the workforce that actually is non-traditional. Yeah, and non-traditional is a, a very sort of coy way of saying uh, doesn't work at a desk nine to five, isn't on a staff job, may or may not have benefits, probably has no access to sick days or health care. And, you know, it means different things to different people, obviously. Uh, if your management, it's terrific. I mean, you've taken labor, which was a huge fixed cost, and you've basically turned it into office supplies. Right. You run out, you get more. Made it flexible. Um, yeah. Made it completely flexible. And, and for, if there are companies that are using it to their advantage in really interesting ways. If you're labor, it depends on what end of the labor scale. Um, if you are a high-end skilled practitioner, you can make more money as a result of the flexibility. For a lot of people, it's a pretty raw deal. But you lose the benefits, though. You lose the benefits. You got to take care of that for yourself. But but for people at the low end, you know, the the lack of permanence has long-term effects. It, it it impacts the the sort of direction of your career, your ability to forge a career. Mental health is not you know mental health statistics for people who have that level of impermanence are not great. So what we try to do is sort of explain it across the entire spectrum of people who are involved with the labor market. And, and, and I can imagine it will change the face of how we tally employment going forward. Already then. is, absolutely. Okay, the other story that you've got uh, is something, of course, that a lot of uh, Americans are very concerned about, which is health care, yeah. uh, hospitals. And uh, we've heard so much in this health care debate about the rising costs uh, in hospitals. I mean, what have you seen or from your reporting in terms of how they are cutting those costs? So we focused on a hospital in Everett, Washington that's, that's actually a pretty good test case of hospitals throughout the United States. Um, it gets a lot of its business from Medicare and Medicaid patients. Medicare and Medicaid famously underpays and that's why so many private health insurers feel that they have to overpay. And so even though it's reliant on that, what, what this hospital has done is actually tried to innovate in ways that save it and its patients money while improving health care. So for example, you know, in a, normal, in a normal hospital, you go in for a heart procedure and you spend most of your day on wheels. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in your one room to, to actually get your regular care. You go into an OR, you go into a recovery room. It not only costs a lot of money to move people around, it increases the likelihood of infection. This hospital said, well, what if we just keep the patient there and wheel the equipment around? Yeah. It lessened hospital stays by a day. Okay, and Josh, I'd uh, love to talk more about that, but I want to get to Avatar sure. and 3D. Have you seen the movie, by the way? I edit a magazine a for a living, so <laughs> um, until James Cameron comes to my office and puts the glasses on me, and by the way, I'm available if he wants to do that. No, I have not seen the movie. I haven't either. But See, we work for a living. That's that, what happens. That's right. That's yeah. right. In the meantime, though, uh, Sony CEO Howard Stringer says that, in fact, 3D is coming uh, to your homes, and uh, does he say, does, what does he think well, about making money on this? Yeah, I mean, that's the big question, is that... Um, it, there's a divided marketplace here. IMAX, which we have a story on, and a lot of the theater chains are betting that you're not going to be able to do this in your homes, that you'll spend more money for a theater experience for something that's this big and dramatic. Sony, uh, you know, believes that, hey, if we can replicate that experience and make it good, you know, what's to say we aren't going to own the, the home consumer? Okay, Josh, great to have you with us. Good to see you.